This is a wow signal burst number two, a perspective on the Drake equation at the end of 2014. There are lots of great places to start if you want to know what the Drake equation is. I'll give you some links in the show notes at wowsignalpodcast.com to a few of the better ones, including a really good short video by Jill Tarter. So I'm not going to try to explain the Drake equation now. We're just taking seven numbers and multiplying them together. The result of that multiplication is an estimate, a rough estimate, of the number of civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy that may communicate with us. Now, this is never meant to be a precise physical or scientific theory. It is a rough tool. But it also serves as a really powerful mental lens. By breaking down this question of how many civilizations are out there that we could talk to now into seven factors, we have been able to focus on each one separately and ask ourselves deep questions about what they mean. Another interesting thing about the Drake equation is that the way it's written from left to right, our knowledge becomes less and less certain about what each term actually is. The first term, which is the number of stars produced by the galaxy on average over the last several billion years, uh, is pretty well known. It's roughly 10, although, you know, it may be 20, but a factor of two is not really what we're concerned with here. Factors of 10 are more like the problem that we're talking about. Now, the second factor is the fraction of stars that have planets. And we now have a very solid estimate, and I think we can use one as the fraction. Pretty much every star has planets. The third term is really the topic of current research. And we're starting to really zoom in on how many of those planets per star are really provide habitable environments, environments in which life could arise. It doesn't mean life has arisen, just that it could arise. And that third term, we think, is probably on the ballpark of 10%. Now, there's been some good estimates done recently by people like Jeff Marcy. And if you go to episode one of season two, he'll discuss that in more depth. So we think it's roughly 10%. And the other four terms, we don't really know. We don't know how often a habitable world gives rise to life. We don't know how often a world with life on it will evolve complex, intelligent life. We don't know how many worlds with complex, intelligent life will evolve technology that could participate in interstellar communication. And finally, we have no idea how long such a civilization would survive or at least would remain willing to communicate with the rest of the galaxy. That last term, L, was the subject of a little uh, discussion that we had in episode two of season two. So we have, at this point, at the end of 2014, good estimates for three of the terms and guesses for the four. Well, what I'm going to do now is let you know where my guesses lie. And they haven't really changed much since the end of last year. So for the, first, for the fourth term, which is F of L, that is how, what percentage of planets yield life, um, I'm still pretty optimistic. I'm going to put it at 0.1. Some people would put it much higher, but no, it can't go higher than 1. So we'll say 0.1. F sub i, the, which is the basically the 
percentage of biospheres that develop sapience, that is, um, life that's at least potentially capable of, of understanding and using technology, I'm still going to stay with point one on that, although uh, some people would place that much lower. There's the dinosaur argument that dinosaurs were around for over 100 million years and, and never produced a sapient species to our knowledge. Um, there's certainly no evidence that they did. We've only been around as a species for about 100,000 years. We might be a fluke. So the answer is we simply don't know. But we'll stay with point one for that. F sub C, which is the percentage of sapients that develop technological civilizations capable of interstellar communication. And of those, you know, you could look at, say, the Greeks, the Romans, the Chinese civilizations of old, all very sophisticated civilizations didn't develop that kind of technology. Um, now we have it, and we owe a lot to the past civilizations that uh, that didn't develop it. But we still, uh, we could easily say it's not that commonly done. So we'll stick with ten percent for that as well. And now we come down to L. If L is not very large, then the answer is. And this is the last term of the Drake equation. How long these civilizations remain inclined and capable to engage in interstellar communication, the longevity factor. Well, if you put in a thousand years, which is a lot longer than we've been capable of it, um, then we don't really get many technological civilizations. The the terms we've chosen give us one one-thousandth of a technological civilization per year. That is one technological civilization arising every thousand years. So it depends on L. If L is a thousand years, that means there's only one. That That's, of course, a rough estimate. But that means we're probably not going to be able to find anybody to talk to in our galaxy. If L is 10,000 years, it's a lot more encouraging. If it's 100,000 years and so on, um, it it's get much, gets much better. Now, I'll refer you to my blog entry, The Jaws of Darkness, while I discuss how L might initially start out rather small, but might, it, with eventual chance contact, between two civilizations, it might start to propagate outward as a much higher number. Um, Because I think that we would find that this kind of communication would be highly beneficial to us as a civilization. Now, that's an argument I can't make rigorously yet, but hopefully we'll continue this conversation and we'll be able to make a better argument or at least understand why it's wrong. So anyway, the where we stand right now on the direct equation is that for every thousand years of life, we get one civilization. So what is L? We don't know the answer to that either. What do you think it is? 